Welcome to Palm Sunday. This is normally a day when we really focus on how quickly humanity changes its tune. Because we begin with this sense of excitement and exaltation and joy as we join with the Israelites in welcoming their Savior. And then before the service is even over, we are joining with them also in calling for his crucifixion. But as familiar as that arc is, as familiar as, as that story development is to us who, who walk through this every Palm Sunday, each year we, we get this, this story, there's another phrase that I'd like to highlight today. And it helps us to focus not necessarily on human failure, but on Jesus' commitment to all of us. Because our, our second reading that we heard today, from the letter to the Philippians, starts out, Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ. Let the same mind be in you was in Jesus Christ. Jesus started out being welcomed into Jerusalem. And although that must have been quite a rush to have that joyous reception, in it was also probably an element of temptation. But Jesus got to see what it was like to be truly loved, adored, welcomed with that level of excitement, that in that was a vision of what things could be like if he chose to wield the power that was his as the second person of the Trinity, as God. And then to go from that to experience everything else that happens, the Last Supper, the Garden of Gethsemane, his arrest, his trial, and then ultimately his crucifixion and death. Humanity showed itself to be fallen and unworthy of Jesus' love in just about every turn. From the fickleness of the crowd at the beginning who were so excited that their Savior was arriving, to the confusion and the, the baseless confidence of the disciples at the Last Supper when they were so sure that nothing could ever happen that would make them betray Jesus, to their inability to stay awake and keep watch with him, disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Then Judas comes, betrays him, the disciples respond with violence, which is the opposite of everything Jesus has talked about up until this point. He's arrested. He's put on trial, and the, tr the justice system betrays him. He is brought before the governor, and the governor fails to do his job, which is to see that the law is executed well. And when there is an out made possible for Jesus, the crowd that was just calling for his exaltation, the, the crowd that was calling Hosanna in the highest, is calling for a murderer to be set free instead of the Lord of love. And Jesus is betrayed again and again and again, not just by Judas, not just by Peter, but by all of humanity, even the structures that are put in place. And yet, Jesus follows the course of love. You see, because when Jesus was born, Jesus was made fully human. And because of that, Jesus needed to be capable of dying. If he was fully human, one of the most human things that a human can do is to die. And he had to be ready to do that when the time came. And he was ready because his love for us was so deep 
so pure, so true, so committed. And it is that love that we are called to emulate. And in the end, all of those disappointments, all of those betrayals, all of those things that could have pulled Jesus aside amounts to distractions. He was able to hold focus and do what he came here to do, which was be totally human as an expression of total, fully committed love. Now we are meant to follow his example, and of course we often think, I can't follow an example like that, I can't heal, I can't raise the dead, I, I can't do all of these miraculous things that Jesus did, how can I follow his example? But we have this reminder in our second reading, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. I think that we are meant to see those distractions of the world that try to pull us from the love of God and from the love of each other as what they are, as distractions. And today, on Palm Sunday, that's resonating especially for me, and maybe it is for you, because there are so many distractions today. I still don't know if y'all at, at, in, in your homes, on your devices, ever heard anything that happened in the parish hall. <laughs> we heard that there was some problem with the sound, but because of the complication of the service and how we're doing some, something different here, I, I won't know until I watch that video tomorrow. And I'm not going to watch it today. And that can be a distraction. The masks that we wear are a distraction. My, my, uh, my delightful uh, responder today, Eleanor, who's here with us today, uh, could have taken my request that she move back so that I could take my mask off for the sermon as a distraction. Uh, my deacon, Wendy, who got her second vaccination on Friday, is not feeling at her best, and she could have taken that as a distraction. My singer, Marguerite, who was here earlier than she normally is, could be taking the early morning as a distraction. I want to be distracted because my computer desk, where the guys are in the back that uh, usually help send the signal, they're not there today, they're out in the hallway because we had a different pathway all of these are distractions. But you know what else is a distraction? Things that tempt us away from doing what we are supposed to do, what we are called to do by God. Things that, that try to tell us that we are so wonderful, so perfect, so beautiful, that we don't need to bother ourselves with caring for other people. And we're back. <laughs> oh, thank you all for your patience. This has been quite the day already. Um, what I'm going to do is just kind of quickly summarize where we've come to this point uh, and then uh, finish out the sermon and continue on with the, with the rest of the service. Um, I do want to give many, many thanks to Anthony and Gary, who are running the tech desk, and Matthew, who has helped with that today. Um, this has been uh, an interesting day, and uh, we're just getting started. <laughs> what I was saying up until this point uh, for the sermon is that Jesus offers us an example that we can follow, not just in how to to preach and teach and heal and raise the dead and all of that, but also how to remain focused on God's call, on God's purpose, on God's love in the midst of the many, many distractions that the world offers. Now today, in our worship service, we have had abundant opportunities for distraction. And it's very hard to try to get back on track, but that is just like the rest of life. Life offers lots of distractions that try to pull us away 
from doing the work of God, which is being love. And those distractions, those temptations, those things that try to pull us away keep coming over and over and over. And they, they wear different masks. They wear different disguises. Sometimes they come at us uh, so that we have a sense of self-righteousness. Well, no, I don't need to help that person or to forgive that person because they were wrong and I am right. And that might be true. But even if you are right, you are called even more to be love. Because you know what? Jesus was right. And Jesus still ended up on the cross, not because he had to, but because he chose to, because he was being love. When we have an opportunity to reach out to help someone who has not had the blessings and the experiences that we have, we can make all sorts of excuses for why we have what we have and they don't have it. But it boils down to, in the end, how are we called to be love? When it comes to things like refraining from purchasing firearms or refraining from refusing a mask, refraining from, from getting into arguments with people that are, are uh, petty, when it comes to refraining from, from participating in gossip or holding grudges, all of those things can make lots of sense and the world has spent a lot of time and energy and money telling us that it all makes sense. But in the end, we are called to be love, just as Christ was being love. Now that doesn't end in a happy place on this earth, because we're all still human, we all still have trials and tribulations and challenges and disappointments and betrayals and ultimately death. But the good news is that path that love puts us on does not end on this earth. It ends passing through death, through the resurrection and into our Father's heavenly kingdom. But I'm getting ahead of myself because, yes, Palm Sunday is wonderful, but Easter Sunday is better. So right now, in these conversations, in this life, what I'm asking you to do is to remember what, what our writer of the letter to the Philippians is saying. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. You see, that letter goes on to describe Jesus' divinity, how Jesus didn't let the fact that he was God get in the way of his job to be love. And if Jesus can do that as the second person of the Trinity, as the Word made flesh, as the Son of God, if he can set all that aside to die for people like you and people like me, then we can be willing to make sacrifices ourselves. And we can do it not because the church tells us to do it or the government tells us to do it or the law tells us to do it. We do it because God has shown us how. So let the distractions go. Focus on what Jesus did. And don't let even our fallen humanity distract us because Jesus became human to transform our humanity and give us the potential to be something better, something holy, something that looks a lot like